Well, here we are, back with some more kitchen cutlery. This is going to be a pretty darn good one. It's another Tucson, obviously. I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, this was actually one of the first ones that I got. Um, I do believe uh, I did cover a, uh, you know, just super overview when I was unboxing it many, many months ago. And I wasn't quite sure what the handle was made out of. Um, I am pretty darn sure now. Uh, they do state that it's ebony wood, and uh, yes, I can certainly uh, say that. You can get super up close on this thing. You can actually see all the natural fibers in there. Yes, it is uh, stacked and stabilized like pack of wood, uh, but yes, you very much do feel those natural fibers. It is uh, a little bit more grippy than G10, so yeah, that and I think it's really attractive, just kind of it is a little more orange than, uh, you know, it would be if it was um, layered natural in black or whatever. But it still has a pretty darn attractive handle. I don't have any problems with it, really. We got a steel cap at the end here, um, which obviously means that this is uh, not like the, uh, the three rivet absolute full tang things. But uh, yeah, still very, very uh, deep. Uh, as far as the uh, the actual tang of the blade goes. Now, um, yeah, this week I don't have one of the boxes for it or anything. But yeah, it just does come in one of their standard things for a kitchen knife. But uh, it's a way because um, I constantly use this thing. That's why I have this blade guard on here. This is actually, uh, well, it's worn off many, many years ago. But uh, this is from Mesermeister. It's just one of their blade guards. And I do that. Because uh, I keep this in our drawer um, in the kitchen, uh, basically right in front of our silverware and whatnot. Uh, because my knife block doesn't accommodate a cleaver. And uh, yeah. So this thing uh, is pretty darn close to that uh, Mesermeister uh, Park Plaza cleaver that I, that I had taken a look at just a little, little while ago. Wow. I promise I haven't been drinking. But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, you can see this does have um, Damascus cladding layers. Not in, uh, you know, an absolutely exorbitant amount of them. But uh, yeah, something that is a little weird is the uh, the top couple of layers on there. I actually just kind of make it look like a patina or like it's almost always a little dirty or something like that, like soap spots or whatever. But uh, yeah, that is part of the, uh, the cladding pattern. It's perfectly fine for me, but... Uh, you know, it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing for absolutely everyone everywhere. What I can say is uh, it should be pleasing for just about everybody is the uh, slicing characteristics on this thing. This is um, absolutely fantastic. Let's see. I can go ahead and uh, yeah, bring my cutting board in there so I don't have to hurt anything more than uh, I already have done in the past uh you can see that uh yep yeah, it does uh kind of pick up some scratches on the uh the outer damascus cladding which um for the most part i'm assuming is probably um 400 or 420 steel somewhere right around there yeah nice and stainless and whatnot and it certainly does you know give it that nice appearance but yeah you can see some scratches on that and whatnot and that's pretty much from um you know normal use and cutting and whatnot uh my best guess is that most of these scratches probably came from, uh, uh, probably pineapples. Um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the dry leaves and stems on some of them can get a little, uh, abrasive and whatnot. And, uh, I certainly do love to use that for the, for, uh, pineapples. But yeah, uh, as a, uh, Chinese vegetable cleaver, it is, uh, definitely blade heavy. So you're talking like a blade balance point, uh, yeah, probably about um, almost an inch out to the blade. Uh, that does give you a lot more power when you're uh, actually slamming that down. If you are going through something uh, rather hard and you are accurate with it, then uh, you can certainly do that. It does have a, a little bit of a uh, curve here up to the tip, so it's not an absolute uh traditional kind of a chinese cleaver that's very very flat and that is kind of designed for just slamming down but those are generally meat cleavers this is a uh, you know more of a vegetable cleaver so uh yeah you know relatively modest as far as the uh, the blade stock thickness goes on there but yeah that does allow you to uh rock and do a little bit of that sort of stuff too 
Uh, I really, really do like this thing. You know, it, it's certainly the uh, the knife that's supplanted the uh, Mesermeister Park Plaza that I have used uh, very, very much throughout, you know, in the last 18 to 20 years or so. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, so the steel on this thing, uh, like a lot of their other ones, is a 10CR15MOV, which, you know, uh, right around VG10 performance kind of thing. So you can kind of think of this thing... Um, in the performance range of uh, probably some older uh, Shun uh, knives back when they were still using VG10. Uh, I do believe most of them have moved to um, VG Max, which is, it's basically a variant of it. And it's, uh, you know, a little bit easier to machine and holds an edge. Just, it's a little tiny bit longer. But yeah. Man, something I think would be really interesting that I haven't seen so much is um trying to uh make some of these knives out of uh zdp 189 it's another japanese steel that's a uh, really interesting one because uh all the ingredients that go into it actually aren't you know super exotic you don't have a uh, super crazy um uh boron or anything um you know just super out there and uh different from a a, a standard steel recipe but uh, it does a fantastic job of uh, remaining stainless. But uh, it's also really well, it does a really good job of holding an edge with uh, much harder, um, you know, Rockwell hardness to it. Uh, I've, I have had a, um, a ZDP 189 uh, Endura for a very long time. I really miss that knife. Um, it actually had, uh, fallen out of my pocket, so I haven't handed it over to somebody, so I hope whoever discovered it in the movie theater where I dropped it is actually enjoying that knife, because it's fantastic. I did some pretty cool modifications to it, too, a nice, um, interesting crown spine, because, uh, I really liked, uh, the look of the, the original, uh, Spyderco Calypso. But yeah, I think it would be an interesting kind of knife, but because you'd have to have it much harder than, uh, you know, any of your standard um, European style knives or whatnot, then, you know, you'd probably uh, run into problems of uh, chipping um, if you were treating it like a, a German style knife or something like that. But, you know, just kind of thinking about it, it's not the absolute most expensive thing ever. However, the company that's most known and associated for working with ZDP-189 is Rockstead, and their, uh, their designs are up there in price. Around Shirogorov kind of levels, you know, you're probably dropping eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars on a folding knife. So, <laughs> you know, there's that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pretty darn good steel. All right, but yeah, I completely got off track of uh, whatever was going on here. So yeah, this guy uh, haven't really had to uh, do any maintenance on him yet. Still quite nice and sharp. Chews through a lot of stuff, and I do like uh, taller blades like these for um, trying to uh, cut stuff like potatoes and whatnot, uh, because, yeah, it is it is going to stick to the side here. These Damascus cladding layers um, on anything don't actually do anything about the, uh, the surface tension on uh, vegetation. Uh, I think that was something that Shun tried to uh, advertise a lot when they were first coming out, and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't work period. It's just not really what that whole thing was designed for. I mean, the, uh, the fluting on the blades too, not necessarily designed for vegetation. It was allowed for, um, for, uh, meat juices and, or, uh, other fats and whatnot to, uh, kind of break suction on there, but, uh, really doesn't work with, uh, starchy foods in the same way, you know, because most of them don't flex. So there's that, but I do like a taller blade for dealing with that because you can cut one of them and then when you go for a second cut that's when a top piece will fall off whereas on a standard chest knife um it's just a little bit different uh you know it'll basically cover the whole blade and whatnot and yeah it's just kind of my personal preference but uh yeah it really does depend on uh you know how much vegetation you actually want to uh, mow down with a knife I personally do like myself a lot of edges. I, I'm I'm an omnivore for sure, but you know I 
I absolutely like all my, you know, potatoes, carrots, zucchini, cabbage, whatever the hell else you want to do. I mean, you know, I don't obviously do a chopped salad or anything like that. That's, um, I would rather just tear some leaves off of the, uh, off of the head of lettuce and whatnot for <laughs> doing something like that. But, uh, yeah, this thing does serve me well. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I haven't seen this thing be able to tackle. And by that, I mean, I can't think of an example. So there you go with that. <laughs> but yeah, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to these things because they do have that balance point that's further out than uh, you will get in a, uh, a European knife that um, really strives to be uh, very, very much balanced, usually uh, in the center or the back side of the bolster. And these certainly don't do that. But they still work fantastically for a pinch grip. You got plenty of uh, room there, so all sorts of knuckle clearance without doing something strange like uh, some of Shun's uh, Alton's angles where they have uh, the knife handle kind of shoot up that way, which, I don't know. Uh, it, it That kind of idea makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing on the cutting board, but it's less ergonomically sound. So, yeah, I suppose there's all of that. But yeah, this thing, fantastic. Um, they do show up on eBay quite frequently. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I got this guy for around 35 bucks. And for that, definitely worth every penny of it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, something I, I did mention at the beginning. Uh, this is basically... Um, ebony wood in layers and everything so that's all stabilized so it's not quite as uh durable i suppose as uh as your standard g10 handles would be on uh most of the other uh, kitchen knives that are uh that tucson manufacturers it doesn't mean that it's going to do anything crazy on you but um yeah wood handles and uh, a dishwasher very much don't mix just due to the amount of humidity and the temperature changes and everything they will cause them to uh swell and shrink and swell and shrink and then probably uh, at some point split along one of these um one of these uh stacked pieces or whatnot so yeah i would say you know i mean you should hand wash pretty much all of your knives but very much do that for anything within uh with a wood handle on it but uh yeah this is uh definitely my uh vegetable cleaver of choice it is a little robust in the fact that uh you know you can do some um some light butchery kind of things uh like going through joints of uh like chicken or uh turkey or something like that but uh anything much more dense than that you know anything like uh cow pig Apparently goat is very, very dense in bone. I learned that from uh, talking with a lot of uh, Hispanic butchers uh, back when I was um, doing uh, a lot of the uh, uh, cutlery trade stuff uh, because they would come by quite often to uh, get their knives sharpened and everything. And, uh, you know, they would usually take a look at uh, a lot of knives. So I kind of learned what they like, what they don't like. Uh, a lot of them are very, very fond of... Uh, well, I think it's just Victorinox now, but it was Forstner. Uh, I think maybe they have Forstner slash Victorinox. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, just the, the Fibrox handles ones or whatnot. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just rambling on and on and on about things that really don't pertain to this knife. And uh, I do kind of apologize for that. But I suppose if you do like some of the ramblings and everything, then, uh, you know, it's here. So... <laughs> There's always a possibility that, uh, you know, you're just going to take a look at it, probably watch like the first two minutes and uh, just kind of move on with your day. I'm perfectly fine with that, too. <laughs> I do like to um, do a lot of these videos as well, just to kind of document my own thoughts and everything. Um, not necessarily here for the kitchen knives, but like pocket knives where I'm uh, reaching upwards of uh, like 270. It's nice to kind of have my thoughts put out onto a, a particular knife so I can revisit it and whatnot and you know so 
yeah, I'm doing a, a lot of these videos for myself, just as much as I'm doing it for all of you. But speaking of which, I suppose it's time to uh, say goodbye. So I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Like and subscribe.